fellow poultry keepers, I have a video on my YouTube channel here called Coop Tours and Winter Weather Tips. So I thought I would do some coop tours with summer weather tips. And I think I have a coop here that is not in my other video with my coop tours. I have a couple of broody hens closed off in this one coop I have. I'm trying to break them of the broodiness. You can see the door is closed there so they can't get to the nesting boxes. In every season of the year, it's important to have things that the chickens can do to prevent boredom because when chickens are bored, they can start pecking at other chickens. In my coop, I have one of these suet block holders, and I put melons in there, a lot of watermelon in the summertime when it's hot out. I have a mirror here, a lot of ramps and roosting poles. I actually put some branches in here, too. These are dried out, but I put pine branches in here because they like to peck at the, at the pine needles. In the summertime, I only have a few. In the wintertime, I have a lot more of those around. I wrap everything in plastic, as you see in my other video, but the branches help with drafts, too, in the wintertime. A lot of people use hanging feeders. I just use these rubber bowls, and, you know, one might think that the chickens would stand in there and poop in those, but I really don't have those problems they stay pretty clean. Um, I did try the hanging feeders and I found that they just kept knocking them over and they were swinging around and dumping feed all over. So for me, this is creates less waste actually to use these big bowls. But sometimes if I don't move these around and in the summer and the spring, if the ground is wet, you can get mold growing underneath your bowls or underneath other things in your run. So once in a while, it's important to check for mold growing in certain places if you're getting a lot of damp, humid weather. Now this summer, we had a ton of hot, humid weather that we usually don't see where I live, and it was prime conditions for parasites. It was a great environment for those to thrive in. So I had a coccidiosis outbreak here with all the damp soil. So keep in mind too, if you're having a summer with a lot of rain, that you might wanna check more often for parasites. I also have some molting birds here in the summertime. It's important to try and pick up dropped feathers off the ground to prevent lice from coming in your run and in your coops. And I've had so many feathers in here, I've been having to rake this out. Um, and I should have mentioned, if, if you do see mold underneath any feeders or anywhere, what I do is I use a little sprayer with a bleach solution and I just spray that with bleach. And if it's a lot of mold, then I will get a shovel and just take all that dirt out because you do not want them breathing in anything like that and you definitely don't want them eating anything like that because it could cause sour crop. You might notice a cage here in my run and I just introduced a new little hen. This girl is half Easter egger, half silky, very pretty little girl. It's never recommended to introduce one chicken by itself because they can get attacked. Um, it's best to introduce in pairs, but I didn't have that option right now and I needed to take this bird from a friend who had to downsize. Surprisingly, it has gone extremely well. I put her in this cage so everybody could see her but not attack her. And she's just automatically getting along with everybody. Nobody is trying to attack her. So today I did open this up and she's been in and out. Things are going great. I'm really surprised because usually, like I said, when you just introduce one by itself, it doesn't go this well. 
But this little hen has a great personality. Things are going awesome. So let's go check out my other coops. Now some people do give ice water in hot, humid weather. But I've been reading stories. These are the little hooks I use on all my latches. I have heard stories of chickens, their body temperature changing too drastically from, you know, being in like 100 degrees and then cooling off rapidly with ice water. And they actually will die from the rapid temperature change. This is the inside of my coop, as seen in my other video. I have three nesting boxes in here. And I have a fan in the window that is pointing outwards so that when they're in here at night and there's all that body heat in here, it is blowing out the window and new air is coming in this window. And that seems to be working really, really well. So yeah, sorry to jump subjects here, but I do not use ice in my water. I just put out, like I said, a lot of watermelon and things like that. Chilled berries from the refrigerator. Nothing frozen. This is just a storage shed where I keep all my feed. This is a tractor supply coop and these are not very very sturdy. Um, we did have to make improvements to it and I will show you a few things here that we did to try to make it a little more sturdy. We attached this, see originally this was the end of the coop. Very thin, very fragile, so we placed, we attached this all to a 4x4 four four all the way around to make it more stable. And I always put rocks around all my coops to prevent anything from easily digging under there. Now this coop was around $300 and there I do like that there's a lot of latches on the door there's four separate latches there I did add that handle because there was really no easy way to grasp the door when opening and shutting it and I've been adding hardware to this coop just to improve it like I said and there's a latch over there that I added because that door just slid open and shut. It did not lock. I'm going to add another latch to this opening here. And there's a lot of air gaps. So this will not be a good coop for when it's, you know, 20 below and in my harsh winters we have here. So the chickens I have in here, I'm actually going to move to an area that will be much better for cold weather. I'll show you the nesting boxes here. Now we put this weather stripping, that black strip, on a lot of places in this coop because water was actually getting in here. Like I said, there's a lot of gaps in this. I had ordered another coop from Tractor Supply I didn't see it in the store, I saw it online, and it was $600, and once it came in, I was super surprised how small it was. It was probably a quarter of the size of this $300 coop, so I questioned what the price difference was, because for being that small, I was like, why on earth is this so expensive? Um, these are two latches on the back door, and then this bottom tray here slides out for cleaning. Um, a friend of mine has the same poop. She replaced this whole back panel because they found it kind of useless, and it's kind of hard to clean if you want to go into it. There's only this one door, so you kind of have to try to reach pretty far. So they just made a whole new back panel. But anyways, um... And Tractor Supply told me that the $600 coop, even though it was smaller, was made out of cedar, which 
I don't know, cedar, the, the vapors from cedar can be toxic for chickens, so I was a little confused there, but then I read the paperwork and it was actually fir wood or something like that. So, yeah, I just chose not to take that one because it was so tiny and I felt that the price was ridiculous. So I got this one here instead. And there's definitely improving that I have to do yet. It has to be painted so that it lasts longer also. And the weather stripping I put in is in that whole top underneath too. This here is my turkey pen in the summertime, which looks way better than my other video because in that video I have it wrapped in plastic and there is wooden crates stacked all around it. So here you can kind of see it when it's looking better and you can actually see my birds. I have a peahen there and my peacock and I have three turkeys right now. Two girls and my Tom there. Hi Blackbeard! Hey buddy! Hey dude! He's actually considered a midget white turkey. He seems extremely big, but he's considered a midget. Full-size turkeys are even bigger than that. Hey guys! I put that playhouse in here for them. They do go in it, especially when I put treats in there. And then we have that coop that we actually built out of snowmobile crates. It's two crates stacked on top of each other with plywood attached. Works out pretty well. There is a window on the back. I would say windows and ventilation are just as important in summertime as they are in wintertime. I'll show you our ventilation setup. I don't have treats, guys. Sorry. I didn't bring anything. <laughs> They're all coming. Hi, Polly. So what we did is we put um, some holes with some PVC pipe there in both sides and some chicken wire in there so nothing can get in that. And then, of course, I have my window open in the back. It would have been best to have another window on the other side, but we were kind of using what we had and whatnot at the time, so always important to have shade and ventilation in the summertime. And so that's that. I just wanted to share those few things with you, show you my setups when there's not two feet of snow out here. And tell you my thoughts about my tractor supply coop. So thank you everybody for watching. And like I said, make sure that you pay attention to those lice and mite issues in summertime. Thanks again. Make sure that you share the channel and subscribe. Appreciate it everybody.